how to make a fleece cage liner. At this point, your machine should be set up, your fabric should be cut out, and you should have everything pinned and ready to go. Taking my pinned fabric, I'm removing the first pin from the corner that I'm gonna start sewing at, placing it underneath the machine. Pro tip, backstitch. I have the camera set up on top of my sewing box, and what I'm going to be showing you how to do is how to backstitch. You will find something on your machine with this symbol. When you push down that lever on some machines, you pull it up on mine, you push it down, that will make the machine run in reverse. Going ahead, starting the stitch, make sure your fabric is nice and lined up the way you want it to be. And go ahead, start sewing about an inch. Now, push down that lever and go backwards an inch. Stop pushing the lever, go forward an inch. Congratulations, you've just done a back stitch. What that is, that's basically a knot so that the thread doesn't come flying out of your fabric. The same way if you were hand sewing, you would tie a knot. Instead of doing that, you're gonna back stitch. Works wonders. Now, at this stage when you're sewing, it doesn't actually matter what color your thread is as long as it's not like totally weird. I wouldn't sew on this blue with a black or a red thread. But if it was green, or because it's a ducky print, if it was yellow, or if it was like white, then I'd be totally cool with it because you're not going to see this thread. If you have trouble sewing straight, remember the masking tape thing from the first one. What you can do, go ahead, put it on your pants so that it doesn't stick, and lay it down. Sew along the edge. That'll keep you going straight. If you have difficulty going straight, that is what I recommend you do because you can just go ahead and rip the mask and take off from under the stitches when you're done. Also, it dissolves in the wash, so even if you can't rip it off, it'll dissolve in the wash. Don't be afraid to start and stop. If that's how you feel comfortable sewing, then your product will be all the better for it. You can see this little piece that goes up and down. It's the screw that holds on the needle. Don't stick your finger under it. It will hurt really, really bad. <laughs> I'm going to do that at some point, I promise, because I do that to myself all the time. But do not put your finger under the needle or under the screw holder because it really hurts. Once in a while, flip it over to make sure that you are stitching. Believe it or not, it has happened and will happen again that you're just going to randomly realize that you haven't actually been sewing for the past 10 minutes and that's really, really annoying. So just double check and make sure that your stitches are actually going through. When you're sewing along the edge of the fabric that is curled, you might sometimes have this happen to you where the needle has trapped the curled piece. Just Use some scissors to cut along this edge and cut it free. It's okay. Feel free. When you get to the corner, leave your needle down in the fabric. Go ahead and raise your foot. Turn the fabric. The needle is now acting like a pivot so that you can pivot the pa pivot the fabric pivot the fabric without losing your stitch. Okay? Remember to put your foot down. Make sure to go around all four edges of your liner, stopping about six inches before you reach the first corner that you started at. You're going to back stitch right there and leave a hole so that you can turn the fleece liner inside out so that the right sides are facing out so that you don't have any ucky edges that shrivel up when you put them through the washing machine. Next things next, go ahead and stick your arm through that six inch hole and turn your cage liner inside out, grabbing from the corners. Make sure that you pull the corners from the outside too so that they don't get stuck inside. Then take it to the sewing machine and close up the hole just with a straight stitch by folding the raw edges in and just stitching across it. Next, you're going to be working on your top stitching. So if you're having trouble with straight lines, go ahead and take a piece of tape, put the tape down straight, 
and then sew along the edge of the tape. That way you don't have any marker lines. Or you could just go ahead and take a marker and draw on your fabric. That is up to you. But if I need to make a straight line and I'm not feeling confident, then I will use tape. All right, to sew the top stitching, I'm starting off with a back stitch up here. And then I'm keeping about two finger widths from the edge. If you're sewing a smaller liner, then by all means, you can keep it one or even as close as you really feel comfortable sewing. But for a bigger liner like this two by three, I find that two to three finger widths is about right. Um, I know fingers aren't a unit of measurement, but it just looks right to me. It's probably about an inch and a half. I feel like it complements it pretty well when it's big like this. And I'm just going in with the same straight stitch that I was going in with before. Like I said, you can choose to use a walking foot or a ball needle, but it's not required. And just going all the way around. Make sure that when you're starting or finishing any stitch, you go in with a back stitch. Now, you can quilt on the top. You can see that for one of the little pads that I sent with this order, I made a little ducky shape. That's totally up to you. You can do crisscrosses or lines or whatever your little heart wants to do. Um, but at this point, I don't think that there's anything more that I can say in this tutorial that would help you more than it would confuse you. So good luck. I hope that this was helpful to you and just thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.